Good morning, folks. You're going to notice a little change at the top of Space Weather News. NASA's feeds have become unpredictable, unreliable, downright crazy at times. Their different wavelengths are coming and going by the minute, so to try to make sure something shows up there, I laid five of the wavelengths on top. Back-end raw files are always available, though processed to show the last day on our star, still without sunspots or eruptive activity. But the coronal holes continue. The southern coronal hole is grabbing Earth's magnetic connection already. Meanwhile, the solar wind stream from the departed northern openings waned over the last 36 hours, with a slight re-rise in plasma density this morning, orange on the right. It is bringing us back into geomagnetic unrest, KP4, but more is not expected without further intensified streams. Large earthquake struck Chile yesterday. Very lucky this one technically struck offshore. And folks, it did indeed strike in the heart of one of our alert zones. The earthquake forecasting has been on a bit of a tear here. Also, folks, the intensification of the Atlantic hurricane was confirmed yesterday to be a record for the Atlantic when it happened two nights ago. This is, of course, as the geomagnetic storm was raging and affecting the planet, as we've seen happen numerous times, just recently at the start of the month, actually. Year-long solar wind records, and we'll go ahead and circle the top mark of the entire last year. That was at the start of the month, and the spike to the right of that, the second highest of the entire year. That's what just hit us over the weekend. Another solar storm, and further evidence of tropospheric modulation. Folks, even though we are a week into the northern fall, good luck telling some parts of the Rockies it's not winter yet. Record snow fell, continues to fall. Record cold snuck into the area and even spread off the plateau down towards the west coast as well. More coming today and tonight. Let's go out to Rosetta and Comet 67P. Although the mission is over, the data analysis is still ongoing. And one of the magic events witnessed was a spike in magnetic fields at the comet during an outbursting event. They've been seeking an explanation, and first they found a solar storm ongoing during the event. But they are confident it was not the solar flare irradiance that did the action. So that means it came down to particle energy and interplanetary magnetic fields. Well, they say it was both. As a CME particle shockwave hit the comet, it was also passing through the heliospheric current sheet, offering a solar wind magnetic reversal for the body. That's particles and fields dwarfing the power of the irradiance. Heard that somewhere else before. Quick note here about suggesting human enhancement for space travel, not just better rockets and cosmic ray shielding, and no, I have no idea what they mean by human enhancement. Couple community notes here. Most of you know Eugene Bagashoff. He's been a speaker at three of our conferences, and we've got his latest paper here if you haven't seen it. Free to read and detailing the potential biogenic seismicity of Earth. Can the energy of the tremendous mass of microbes below be enough to trigger earthquakes? Most of you also know Dr. Robitaille, thrice at our conference as well. Revolutionized MRI and now taking on larger scale radiology. In his latest video, he takes on the famous image of the black hole channel linked below. Highly recommended you check it out. Also a fun investigation into the snowball stratosphere. A look at how Earth's upper atmosphere behaves during the most extreme ice ages of Earth. And one of the authors is an observer. Up next, geez, what if planet 9 is a primordial black hole? What if I'm a blue three-headed nematode? Fun question, but asinine in reality. The infrared, magnetic fields, x-rays, so many things would give this away, even at its tremendously small size. By the way, on 8x11 paper, their giant black dot is allegedly the size of the actual black hole they envision hiding out there. FYI, even something this small would be seen by Ibex on the heliosphere, by Iris and the other infrared scopes, and I'd have to imagine Chandra or one of the gamma detectors would catch it doing something here or there. Up next, it's the filaments of the cosmos. We're looking at the results of the Eagle simulation of the neutral intergalactic medium and filamentary construction out and around in the dark abyss between the large galactic neighborhoods. It's all connected. Up next, no, I do not believe it is possible for Dr. Svensmark to post something on archive without my eyes training down onto that name like a laser. The father of cosmic ray cloud forcing is back with a team describing some of the minutiae and small scale detail work of the charged particles the aerosols, the dynamics and action at play in cloud nucleation and growth. Cosmic rays trigger cloud condensation nuclei and ionize the ambient air and dust particles. Last but not least, 
Folks, a weird thing was found in a California lake. This extremophile only watery residence is home to a creature that has three different sexes. Now, while it is tempting to make gender jokes about the genital confusion in this California lake, it is in fact Mono Lake. With its extreme conditions and very extreme history, I'm actually not so shocked that life got weird there. So how extreme was its past? Well, it appears to have been one of the focal points, one of the most affected lakes on Earth during the magnetic excursion 36,000 years ago. This is our modern mainstream understanding of when these fast magnetic reversals have occurred. Data on the Lachamp event is all over the place, but something in the 40 to 50,000 range is about right for both the evidence and the timeline. Folks below, please find the video on Cosmic Disaster if you haven't seen it. Our three movies from August are linked directly below in the description box, Plasma, Climate, and, relating to this last one, Magnetic Catastrophe. Today is the last day to pre-register for Observing the Frontier 2020. We are at a record attendance figure here 10 months before the conference actually happens. This is going to be the Observer's event of a lifetime. Observatoryproject.com for details, registration, and more. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.